Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with beeswax and a torch, and because it's mixed media, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Consider subscribing and joining this artsy community. Don't forget, hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded artsy folks like yourself. Hi all, I thought it would be fun to show you what a typical week in the life looks like around here, which is why I'm picking you up for this artist studio vlog in the pole barn and not in the studio because today is Monday and generally on Mondays, I work on the computer, kind of get caught up on emails, go through what my week is going to look like, just a general catch up from the previous week and from the weekend. And while I do have a desk over in my studio, I generally do a lot of my computer work here on our kitchen island. For some reason, I haven't quite transitioned into the studio, using the studio desk um, for this particular purpose for some reason. So, so here I am in our kitchen working away on this Monday. And if you hear some tumbling in the background, I'm also getting caught up on laundry. Typically laundry is done on Mondays and Fridays around here, depending on how the week which is also why I am working out of our kitchen to have easy access to the washer and dryer and hear it go off. The time when the timer goes off, I can quickly switch loads around between washer and dryer and yeah, all of that, you know, laundry fun stuff. But at any rate, I'm gonna get back to some computer work and I'll pick you back up in just a few. All right, I have made it into the studio. Meal planning is done. Email is pretty much gone through. I've responded to what I need to respond to anyways. And uh, I have the grocery scheduled for pickup. So now in the studio, I have about, I think about two hours. And um, this place is a little bit of a disaster area. I have the paint out still from when we painted the stairs and the stair drawing slash sketch out along with a million other things that need to get put away. So I'm hoping I can get all of this put away and then also maybe prep a panel for another encaustic painting for hopefully later in the week. So here is the state of the studio. Like I said, that is all from the stair project. If you missed that video, I'll link it up top here somewhere. But that is all from that. And then I have jelly prints here and jelly prints over yonder on that griddle, along with a bunch of other stuff that just needs picked up and cleaned up, like um, this pile here. This is left over from our trip which I think by now you'll have seen that video in that envelope or that bag there. There's prints from other artists that I bought that I wanna get put away until I find frames. And then in these two bags, these are little dried different um, organic materials, some sage, some cedar, some pine, little bundles that um, I still need to be finished drying out, but also we made those during the trip too. So I'm gonna get those put over on my shelf area and yeah, get everything cleaned up.
Okay, I got part of the mask cleaned up and I decided I wanted to make some file folders for these West Virginia trees because it's gonna be kind of an ongoing thing and I wanted to be able to sort the jelly prints without writing on them so that I know that this was, you know, the basswood tree or the brookside alder or the white oak or whatever tree it was that I made the jelly plate print of, if that makes sense. So right now I'm writing on some uh, inexpensive manila folder so that I can slide all these things into it. And I also have a couple images that I'm going to slide into the folders. And then I think I'm going to put them in the um, map drawers. So that's the plan as of right now. I'm also sticking in pictures in here that I took and printed out from the 100 day project. So I'm going to have um, folders with the tree names and the pictures in them as well. So I haven't decided if I'm going to use this notebook to keep track of this tree project or if I'm going to use something else on the computer or what I'm going to use, but I'm also going to put this with these file folders. Happy Tuesday. In the studio this morning, I want to put one more layer of gesso onto this panel, let it dry. Um, it's fairly early in the day, so I'm hoping to get back to it later this afternoon for the underpainting. But I have um, a bunch of errands that I have to run today as well. So not sure I'm going to get that done. But um, I wanted to pick you up because I'm going through my phone ready to post a recap for the 100 day project, the um, 25 different trees of West Virginia. I'm gonna post that to Instagram. And I've been a, a little bit um, lax, if you will. I was doing really good in the beginning, posting these videos to YouTube, but um, I kinda got overwhelmed with all of the stuff. So I'm hoping in the next, sorry, Matt's calling. Okay, sorry about that, um, I'm back. I think I was in the middle of saying that uh, the 100 day project, I've been a little bit lax posting the videos on YouTube, but I'm hoping to get a bunch done and edited the next several days to slowly kind of put those out on YouTube because I know not all of you are on Instagram. So I do apologize for that. Um, they're just gonna be short little videos under two minutes so that'll be nice quick little watches for you but I need to look at my phone compare pictures on my phone and make sure I have pictures or a video of the finished painting of all these so I thought I'd pick you up and just flip the camera around and show you all 25 kind of together and I have them housed here in this map drawer I have to put labels on these that's not the right drawer that's on the list of things to do too. Then I know where everything's at. All right, so here they all are, the little minis, and they all need mounted and things like that. But I just thought I'd give you a quick overview of all of them while I was going to be pulling some out and taking pictures. Oh. And this is an extra experimental panel that I might eventually do something with, but let me see if I can back up without backing into anything here. There you go, all 25 of them. All right, a panel is prepped, videos are taken. Now I need to run out and do a couple errands. I'm gonna try to kind of take you guys along, but um, I'm driving and <laughs> Matt's not coming with me because it's the middle of the work day. And so I don't know how much filming I'm gonna get or if I'm gonna be able to set the camera up properly, but I'm gonna try. It's a really pretty area and um, sometimes just running to the grocery store is a beautiful drive. So 
I will see what I can do for you. Back home several hours later and now I just need to unpack all of the groceries and I kind of like to wash all of the vegetables get them somewhat chopped up peeled whatever I need to do as soon as I get back from the grocery store that way whenever I want to make something with those vegetables they're ready to go so that's what I'm gonna do now All right, veggies are all cut up, getting ready to put them in the fridge. And I have two kind of maybe controversial questions for you. The first one is, do you keep kind of the less than green parts of the celery and or the lettuce? They're a little bit more yellow in shade or a greenish yellowish. I personally keep them, keep them and we eat them. In the winter, I make soups out of them, but um, it's too hot for that these days. So um, I just wanted to know, what do you do with them? Do you eat them? Do you pitch them? What do you do? We are also starting to compost. So if anybody has any composting tips, um, how to's, what not to do, um, any tips or tricks that you've used in the past, we got a free composting tumbler which i'm really grateful for but we've never composted before our kitchen scraps and i've read that you're supposed to mix cardboard and or shredded paper in with the kitchen scraps and have more like dried brown material than kitchen scraps so i'm just wondering if you guys have any tips or tricks on composting specifically with a tumbler composter let me know all right, today has completely gotten away from me. My plan was to go over back over to the studio this afternoon and do the underpainting on that panel. However, I have about an hour of time left and I'm not sure that that's gonna be enough time to do the underpainting. So I'm back on the computer and what I'm gonna do is see what videos I've already put out on YouTube for that 100 day West Virginia series and then take and dump the videos off of my camera of the trees that I haven't done yet so that they're at least on the computer so I can edit them on the computer and then upload them to YouTube. I also might have time to make a reel for Instagram of all of the 100 day trees, but I'm guessing that's probably gonna happen tomorrow morning because all of this takes time. So at any rate, not super exciting. I hope you guys are finding this video a little bit enjoyable as I haven't done a whole lot of um, really thrilling things here, but um, just, you know, everyday life as a, an artist and running an art business. So um, anyways, back to the computer work. I don't know if this is gonna show up real well, but these are all of the videos I have on this encaustic West Virginia tree series. And I think I have probably four or five more to go, but um, I'm just gonna kind of compare the two and dump any videos that I need onto the computer here. And I'm comparing those YouTube videos with my Trello list on here. And so again, I don't know if you're really gonna be able to see this very well, but I left off with this tree here, which was the yellow birch. I do have that completed on YouTube. And so I have one, two, three, four, five more, five more trees to go. So um, stay tuned for those here on YouTube. 
Okay, dinner was quite good. I will put the link for that down below in the description. If you can hear that buzzing going on in the background, Matt is out weed whipping. And I got the kitchen pretty much cleaned up, so I'm going to try to do a bit of a video editing next for probably about an hour, and then I'm hoping we're just gonna call it for the night. Um, it's gonna go on about, I think it's about seven o'clock now, so hoping by about eight o'clock we're gonna call it quits and um, sit down and chillax some. As you will probably have just seen, I did the underpainting on this panel and I wanted to flip the camera around and show you two little mistakes that I've made on here so that maybe um, all of you are aware and um, could prevent this in your own paintings if you're doing something similar. Okay, this is the encaustic gesso that I use. It's by r &F. It's wonderful. I love it. However, it's not completely waterproof. So when you mix water onto the panel, especially when you get it quite wet, you have a tendency to sometimes get, I think you can see that here, where the layers of encaustic gesso, because I let too much water sit right here and then I brushed over the top of it again. So the paintbrush actually took off a little bit of the encaustic gesso underneath these layers. So that happened here and then up here, if I can find the spot, right there. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. That happened right there. And so what happened was I, when I was coming across over the top over here, a water drop dripped down there. I didn't notice it. And then when I went back over it, that water drop took off some of that encaustic gesso. And in all honesty, the gesso does not have to be on this panel. I like to put it down because I like to start with a white background so that when I put my underpainting over it, it has, um, you know, it's like a true kind of to color. It's, you're not putting the underpainting over a brownish colored wood panel. So, um, and again, an underpainting is not necessarily needed. I just find it helpful for when I'm not just staring at a blank panel when I'm getting ready to start this painting. It just kind of gives me a little something to go off of, a little something to react to. So at any rate, the problem is with these little divots kind of that I now have in this panel, it's, they're ever so slight, it's just, you know, I probably can't even show you the thickness between my fingers of how slight that little divot is, but it's going to matter in the end when I go to put encaustic paint on it because that encaustic paint is not going to be a completely smooth surface. And again, I know I'm going to have a lot of texture in this painting, but I always like to try to start out with a smooth surface. Um, and that way, any texture that I don't want in there you know, in any smooth areas, there is not any extra texture that shouldn't be there. Hopefully all this makes sense. So I'm going to try to drip a bit of the white encaustic gesso into these little areas and then obviously let the whole thing dry before I put some encaustic medium down. Okay, I think that's better. Um, and since you've already seen me paint this painting, three times now. I probably won't film a whole lot of it, but I will pick a camera up, 
from time to time when I have something that I think will be of value to say and I might just do like a time lapse of me putting down the encaustic medium. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to film and not film for you all but um yeah I just I don't want to bore you by painting this painting again for the fourth time because you've already seen me paint it three times um, or the sketch for this rather but um, like I said if I have anything important to say that I think you will find of use or um, useful information I'll definitely pick up the camera and let you know. All right several layers of encaustic medium later it doesn't look much different but um, that's okay. The first couple steps on this are done. I'm happy with it. It's a nice smooth surface, so that is also good. I will most likely pick you guys back up tomorrow unless something exciting happens tonight, which I don't think it's going to, but you know, you never know. So we'll see you tomorrow. Friday all end of the uh, work week or officially the end of the work week perhaps at any rate in the studio I'm going to get back to painting this painting that I had put the encaustic medium down on um, Thursday yesterday I didn't pick up the camera a whole lot because it was kind of a work around the property kind of day lots of mowing of grass and um I don't know, probably not really exciting for you to see me go back and forth on a lawnmower. I did get a couple snippets of that in and um, that took me pretty much most of the day. And then uh, yesterday evening, we ran out to a local hardware store to pick up some more building supplies for the pole barn. So not much was filmed yesterday, but that kind of catches you up. Anyways, back to today. I am going to be back working on this painting and I think I will flip the camera around first and show you my setup. I'll probably put you guys just on some time lapses here. And if I think of anything important, I'll pick the camera back up and um, tell you about it. But again, since you've seen me paint this already three times, um, the, there's probably not too many uh, interesting things to note about this. But um, like I said, I will pick you up if there is. But let me show you the setup first because it's kind of a different setup than what I've been using. And I think it's going to work out rather nicely for these large paintings. I'm trying to stand back here and give you an overall view of it. But um, basically I have the large painting here and then I have my two griddles set up here. Which is probably nothing new if you've been here for a while. Um, this I'm going to put the cool colors on, the blues and greens, and then this griddle I'm going to use with the reds, yellows, oranges, um, maybe some purples. I don't know if I have purples in this one. At any rate, the two griddles set up. And I don't have my encaustic medium plugged in, as you can see. It's still in a solid form. And I've decided to not plug that in and just use these little mini encaustic medium painting bars, if you will. <laughs> they're, they're little cubes of encaustic medium. And I decided not to heat up that big pan of encaustic medium for a couple of reasons. The first reason is the electricity in the studio here. I would have to plug it into basically a plug that's on the same circuit as these other two griddles. And if you saw several videos back, you saw me blowing fuses and I don't want to have to deal with that today. And then the other reason is I think the less that I heat that big thing of encaustic medium up, the better off it is. 
the more um, stable it remains, if that makes sense. It's just a theory of mine. I don't know in fact that that's true. But um, I'm gonna use these little blocks to thin out my encaustic medium, or rather my encaustic paint. I'm gonna use these blocks of encaustic medium right on the griddles to thin the paint out. And here is the paint swatch cards that I had made up earlier when I did the sketch. And so here are all of the paint colors that I'm going to be using. I'd pick up the camera and just kind of explain something. I'm sure I've said this before, but I um, thought I'll, I'll flip the camera around and show you the painting itself. But I, I had some leftover dark color paint on the palette from up in the top of the painting, the mountain area. And so rather than just wasting that paint and before I added a bunch of greens to the palette, I took and spread that darker color throughout some of the air, other areas on the painting. And I feel this just makes a more cohesive painting. Now some of that may not come through in the final painting, but some of it might. And by spreading the paint, one paint color from one area of a painting to a few other areas, it just kind of ties everything together and makes it a little bit more cohesive. Now. I'm sure this is not uh, technical terms that I'm using, but I'm hoping you're understanding what I'm saying here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna continue on with some greens now. all my um, camera totally died camera battery rather so um, I continued to tweak the painting but I um, hadn't noticed that my camera battery died so it's getting there um, I think this is probably where I'm gonna call it for today on this painting I have to go make dinner but first I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you the painting versus the sketch all right there you go painting on the right side i think it'll be the right side for you guys as well and the sketch on the other side and so you can see i have a lot more details that i have to put into the painting but i do think that the base layers are pretty much done get you a couple close-ups i tweaked the sky a little bit on the painting and added in some more white clouds versus that um, sketch there. And so I like that a lot better. Also added in some darker blues up in the sky. So I think that looks better. And then of course the mountain. And in the mountain I also added in some greens in here. Um, I think that would be more realistic of an actual mountain. You would see some forest in the background kind of muted greens. So I, I picked up some greens that were down here and added them in the mountain. And then of course the oranges and greens and everything else down in the rest of the painting. More to come on this. 
But like I said, for now I'm going to call it quits in the studio. For dinner tonight, we are making tofu bowls, which is one of my favorite um, dinners, kind of summer, spring timey dinners. I find it absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna be having to go make that, get the tofu baked and the rice cooked and all of the goodness. Um, so calling it quits in the studio. Also going to end this video here now. I hope you enjoyed coming along, seeing a little bit of a week in the life here. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It truly, truly does help me out. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. More painting videos coming your way. As always, thanks so very, very, very much for following along. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.